Um, hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're discussing what it means to be more like Jesus. Many Christians place a lot of stress on becoming more like Jesus, but what exactly does that mean? Curing illnesses? Multiplying loaves and fish? Walking on water? Fortunately, not all of the qualities that Jesus demonstrates in the Gospels are quite as hard to attain as those. Jesus also had many qualities that any person can work towards without any of that. And last time, we discussed the way Jesus dealt with different kinds of dishonesty. Today, we'll talk about how Jesus dealt with enemies, and not just his own enemies either. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you shut the kingdom of heaven against men, for you yourselves do not enter in and those that are going in you suffer not to enter. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you devour the houses of widows, praying long prayers. For this you shall receive the greater judgment. Matthew 23, 13-14 Jesus openly criticized the Pharisees and other religious officials for some decisions they'd made to obstruct other people's progress on their path to heaven, and for many other things as well. These were powerful people, and Jesus had no hesitation in calling out their faults in public. Like him, we also should be unafraid to tell the truth about powerful people, and warn others against being deceived by rich, powerful evildoers. And the ruler of the synagogue, being angry that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, answering, said to the multitude, Six days there are, wherein you ought to work. In them, therefore, come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. And the Lord, answering him, said, Ye hypocrites, doth not every one of you on the Sabbath day loose his ox or his ass from the manger, and lead them to water? Luke 13, 14 to 15. Just as he was unafraid to call out the faults of the rich and powerful in public, Jesus was equally willing to do the same for their hypocrisy, and we should be too. However, what about situations where the enemies of Jesus used actual physical force against him? Many people think of Jesus' advice to turn the other cheek when confronted by enemies. You have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you not to resist evil. But if one strike thee on thy right cheek, turn to him also the other. Matthew 5, 38-39 However, while Jesus says not to resist your own evil enemies with force, he doesn't say that you shouldn't respond to them at all. Both he... And when he had said these things, one of the servants standing by gave Jesus a blow, saying, Answerest thou the high priest so? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, give testimony of the evil. But if well, why strikest thou me? John eighteen twenty two to twenty three and Saint Paul and the high priest Ananias commanded them that stood by him to strike him on the mouth. Then Paul said to him, God shall strike thee, thou whited wall, for sittest thou to judge me according to the law, and contrary to the law commandest me to be struck. Acts twenty three two to three replied to acts of physical violence with highly critical words. We don't need to make the job of our attackers easier in order to be following the will of Jesus. Furthermore, when someone is openly sinning against God, that's a bit different than if they just do something that causes harm to us personally. In those cases, more forceful methods may be called for. And he found in the temple them that sold oxen and sheep and doves, and the changers of money sitting. And when he had made, as it were, a scourge of little cords, he drove them all out of the temple, the sheep also, and the oxen, and the money of the changers he poured out, and the tables he overthrew. And to them that sold doves he said, Take these things hence, and make not the house of my father a house of traffic. John 2, 14-16 While this verse doesn't directly say that anyone was physically harmed, it's clear that in this instance Jesus was perfectly willing to take strong, forceful action, because these traitors weren't just committing some personal slight against him. Theirs was a sin against God, and Jesus made that perfectly clear. As far as it's within our power, therefore, 
we should never let holy things be perverted for evil or selfish reasons. So many people in the church seem to want the church to serve their interests instead of the other way around, and those people are not obeying the will of God. As Jesus said, He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth. Luke 11.23 If someone is our enemy, we should refute their accusations against us and criticize their violent actions, but use force mainly when it's God who's being attacked, and always try to do the will of Jesus, helping to save souls. Next time, The Courage of Jesus uh, that's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.